Hey there, fellow time travelers of the TV world. Television, do you remember the days when television was a delightful portal to mysterious and fantastical realms? Ah, the good old times. Well, let's take a journey down memory lane, shall we? Do you recall the year 1983 when a unique and intriguing show called Manimal graced our screens? It was a series that dared to blend the ordinary with the extraordinary as our protagonist, Dr. Jonathan Chase, could transform into any animal to solve crimes. Yep, you've heard that right. This show was a true gem of its era, a delightful cocktail of crime solving and shape shifting that had us all hooked. But hey, enough about my nostalgia. I'm curious, did you watch Manimal back in the day? If so, what are your fondest memories of the show? Did you have a favorite transformation, or maybe a character who left a lasting impression on you? I'd love to hear your stories and relive those moments with you. Now, speaking of Manimal, did you know that there are some fascinating random facts about the show that might just surprise you? Let's dive into the world of hidden trivia, my friends, and uncover some intriguing tidbits about this cult classic. Stay tuned. Manimal, the unexpected challenge of dubbing and French success in the Spanish dubbing of the 1983 TV series Manimal, an interesting linguistic challenge emerged. The character J.C., who insisted on being addressed by his initials, was translated as Jodeci. This translation, however, diverged significantly from the original version, making it harder to match lip movements due to its longer one-syllable name. Instead of opting for a simpler approach like keeping the English pronunciation and calling him Jesse in foreign languages, the decision was made to create a somewhat contrived translation. While this linguistic twist added a layer of complexity for Spanish-speaking viewers, Manimal still managed to captivate audiences around the world. Interestingly, the series shares some notable similarities with the 1998 show Animorphs, which also explored the theme of humans transforming into animals. Both series tapped into the fascination with shape-shifting and animal abilities, creating a unique viewing experience for their respective audiences. However, it was in France where Manimal truly achieved remarkable success. The series enjoyed numerous reruns, with each airing resulting in soaring ratings. In 1988, a unique format was introduced where viewers had the opportunity to choose the TV series they wanted to see through phone and voting. Whenever Manimal was offered as a choice, it consistently dominated the voting by a landslide. The station reported an unprecedented influx of phone calls, despite the toll expenses, whenever Manimal was on the ballot. In conclusion, Manimal left its mark on the world of television, not only for its intriguing storyline, but also for the linguistic challenges it presented in dubbing. Its success in France, with record-breaking viewer engagement through phone and voting, demonstrated the enduring appeal of this 1983 series. In the 1983 TV series Manimal, the superpower that the main character, JC, possesses is known as shapeshifting. This unique ability allowed him to transform into various animals to solve crimes and combat villains. One interesting aspect of the show was JC's apartment, which featured an impressive collection of artifacts. Most notably, his apartment showcased elements of Egyptian mythology, including an Anubis statuette. This added a mysterious and exotic ambience to his living space, reflecting the show's theme of transformation and the supernatural. Additionally, the production of Manimal presented unique challenges when it came to the animal transformations. Whenever the script called for JC to transition into an animal, a team of professionals, including the production designer, director, set decorator, stunt supervisor, and animal wrangler, had to carefully coordinate every move. Shooting on a sound stage provided more control over the animals, while location shoots were considerably more difficult to manage. For instance, when a script required the presence of a cobra, the entire set's perimeter floor and walls had to be sealed to prevent the snake from escaping. A low wall was erected at the open end of the set to seal the stage completely. To set up filming action scenes involving the snake, the camera crew had to lift their equipment into the walled-off stage area, all under the watchful eye of the snake wrangler, who supervised the animal's movements. In summary, Manimal from 1983 featured a protagonist with the extraordinary power of shapeshifting, and the show's attention to detail extended to the unique artifacts in JC's apartment, particularly the Anubis statuette. 
Additionally, the challenges of incorporating animal transformations into the series required careful coordination and control, especially when working with potentially dangerous animals like cobras. In 1983, the TV series Manimal made its debut, leaving a lasting impression, especially in France. Unlike its reception in the United States, where some critics and viewers criticized it without clear reasons, the show found appreciation across the Atlantic. French critics and audiences recognized its well-acted performances, and high production values, expressing regret that it didn't last longer. The contrast was striking in the US. Manimal was sometimes treated as a sport for online ridicule, while in France, it was celebrated for its highly entertaining value. So much so that a French production company even considered resurrecting the series with the original cast, although that plan didn't come to fruition. Meanwhile, creator Glenna Larson briefly brought back the Jonathan Chase character for a crossover with Nightman. However, this revival saw a notable change in the transformation sequences. The traditional practical effects were replaced with CGI, reflecting the evolving technology in television production. One notable aspect of Manimal was the restoration of Chase's clothes whenever he shapeshifted back to human form, despite the apparent tearing during his transformation. This aspect required a suspension of disbelief and was considered part of the show's magic. It's not unlike accepting Wonder Woman's tiara boomeranging back to her or the convenience of David Banner always finding clothes that fit after transforming into the Hulk. Ultimately, Manimal was a show that thrived on escapism, offering viewers a fantastical world to enjoy for an hour. While some might find its conditions a bit far-fetched, the show's appeal lay in its ability to provide entertainment through suspension of disbelief. In the end, Manimal found a loyal following in France, where it was appreciated for its entertainment value and creativity, even if it didn't enjoy the same reception in its home country. It's a reminder that taste in television can vary widely, and sometimes, the most unexpected shows can find their niche. In an interview published in Infinity Magazine 23, Stu Phillips revealed a unique aspect of his career as a composer. Phillips, known for his work in the entertainment industry, disclosed that he had composed the theme and incidental music for the pilot episode of the 1983 TV series Manimal. However, to his surprise, his music was rejected, marking the only instance in his extensive 70-year career where his music went unused. This revelation sheds light on the behind-the-scenes dynamics of Manimal. The series, which followed the adventures of Dr. Jonathan Chase, a man with the ability to transform into any animal, had its share of challenges during production. Phillips rejected music, though a notable incident ultimately did not define the show's fate. Manimal gained a reputation as a unique and ambitious series, despite its short run of only eight episodes. The rejection of Phillips' music for the pilot is just one of the many anecdotes that surround the show. It remains a cult classic, remembered for its intriguing premise and the charismatic portrayal of J.C. Chase. As the years have passed, Manimal has garnered a dedicated fan base, and Stu Phillips' revelation about his unused music serves as a trivia tidbit for enthusiasts. The show's legacy endures, and it continues to be a topic of discussion among fans of 1980s television. Interestingly, the DVD release of Manimal followed a peculiar timeline. It was first made available in France in 2012, three years before it became available in the United States, the show's country of origin. This distribution quirk added to the show's mystique, further fueling the curiosity of fans on both sides of the Atlantic. In conclusion, Manimal may have been a short-lived series, but it remains a notable part of television history. Stu Phillips' rejected music for the pilot episode is a fascinating anecdote that underscores the show's uniqueness. With its dedicated fan base and intriguing distribution history, Manimal continues to be a topic of interest for those fascinated by the quirks of television production. As we bid adieu to the enigmatic world of Manimal, we invite you to delve into the depths of your own nostalgia and memories, forged in the fires of 1983 television magic. Manimal, with its unique blend of crime-solving, shape-shifting, and timeless charm, left an indelible mark on the hearts of many. Perhaps you remember the thrilling adventures of Dr. Jonathan Chase as he seamlessly transformed into various animals, each form a symbol of power and agility. 
Or maybe it was the undeniable charisma of Simon Mac Corkindale that kept you glued to the screen, episode after episode. The series had a way of ensnaring viewers with its mystique and leaving them yearning for more. As we reflect on this classic gem, we encourage you to share your treasured memories and thoughts about Manimal. What was it about the show that captivated you? Which episodes made your heart race or tugged at your emotions? Whether you were a devoted fan or a casual observer, your personal connection to Manimal is a part of its enduring legacy. Join the conversation, share your favorite moments, and let your voice echo through the annals of television history. Together, we celebrate the magic of Manimal, a series that has defied time and continues to hold a special place in the hearts of its admirers. Thank you for taking this nostalgic journey with us and for sharing your passion for Manimal. Your stories and insights are the threads that keep the tapestry of this TV series alive. Until we meet again, keep the spirit of Manimal alive in your hearts.